Can you believe that we're already talking about ice fishing? I just don't think I'll ever be ready. That's kind of disgusting actually, but the leaves are changing, water temps are dropping, fish are on the chew. We're actually out today scouting for early ice spots because it's way easier to find fish now versus having to drill 200 holes. Oh, I'm really good at dragging big minnows. And I wanted to break down three incredible hard baits for putting fish topside through the ice. I know you've all heard of jigging wraps, ripping wraps, slab wraps, but they all have a special time and place for when they should be used, when they're gonna catch you more fish, or when they're gonna be scaring away more fish. So let's break it down. We'll start with the jigging wrap. Early ice, oxygen levels are still high. Fish are active, they're willing to chase. Jigging wraps are darty, they work out to the side, right? Ripping wraps and slab wraps are a little bit more vertical and a little less of this. I like a number five is kind of my all around size. Helsinki Shad is my all around favorite color. I will bump up to a number seven on walleye factories, lakes like Mille Lacs and Leech and Lake of the Woods and you name it, just lakes that have got higher numbers of fish and more bigger fish. But a number five is kind of all around ice fishing. And so early ice, what I'm doing is I'm working this in one foot pops. It's not the big three to five foot rips like you're doing in the boat. But a one foot pop, that bait is still gonna work two, three feet out to the side on, right? And what I'll do is I'll do kind of a bigger pop, and these baits are all visual. There's no rattles, there's no vibration, really. It's all sight. And so one pop, and then when I think I have a fish, you know, kind of moving in or seeing it on my cone angle on my transducer, then I'll kind of rock it in place, dance it, and then do little hops rock it in place but yeah it's all visual it's all sight no rattles and they're willing to chase that bait down and kind of react with a subtle one foot hop approach early ice jig and wraps really shine so on the opposite end of the spectrum from a jig and wrap we've got the rip and wrap jig and wraps are like 95 percent visual they don't have that rattle and thump it's just a, a sight thing fish come in from a distance to see what it is and eat it rip and wraps you hear that They've got rattles, they give off vibration, it's a feel thing. And that's why these things shine early mornings and evenings, that sunrise, sunset, 30 minute flash bite window that you have in these clear lakes. These things get the job done. Same if you've got dirty water, a little bit less clarity. Let's say the water clarity is, you know, four, five, six feet, where a lot of these zebra mussel infested lakes, you can see down 12 to 20 feet. So there's dirtier water, low light, especially when you bust out the UV colors is where these things shine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do kind of two foot rips with these. And like I mentioned before, it's not as much of a horizontal thing as it is a vertical thing. And so these really shine too later in the winter when fish are less willing to chase sideways, but you're kind of calling them up and working them up and finding that ceiling where you can get them as high as they can before they go back down to bottom and finding that line on your electronics and working those fish up to get them to eat. So what I'll do is those little rips and then when I'm graphing a fish, getting it to rise, I'll kind of do the buck and bronco where you're not putting any slack in your line, but you're just rolling that tip and that head kind of stays in place, kicks the back end up. A lot of times that's where your bite's gonna come. You call them in by making that commotion and then you seal the deal by rocking it in place. So as far as sizes go for these rip and wraps through the ice, kind of my all around favorite size, no matter if I'm in Minnesota, Canada, everywhere is a number six. It looks a little bit big at first, but even a 14 inch walleye will come up and crush it. Now in central Minnesota where I'm at in Brainerd, we've got some really clear pressured water. We have zebra mussels, sometimes clarity is 20 foot. There's lots of people fishing community holes. I'll drop down to a number five. Around here, pressured fish, five, there's a bass or something <laughs> jumping. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> anyway, where were we? Uh, so this number five size, it's a sleeper around where I'm at in central Minnesota, super clear water, zebra mussel infested finicky fish. It's a little bit smaller profile, but still has all of those fish tracking properties. Don't be afraid to tie that on. Six is great all around. If I'm heading north or to a big fish factory, 
which if you're watching this video and you live in the province of Manitoba, don't be afraid to buy the big giant number sevens. There's something special about that giant profile for calling fish in and getting the job done. I would say three quarters of my master angler walleyes I've ever caught, 28 inch or bigger walleye basically, have come on that giant number seven size. Go big or go home. All right, now we're gonna get into what I call the sleeper of the bunch, the slab wrap. It's the newest option of the three, and it's kind of a hybrid of both. So it's like a jig and wrap in that it's visual. It doesn't have the rattles of a rip and wrap, but it does give off vibration. Jig and wraps are darty, glidey. These have a little shimmy to them, and you can actually feel the brrrr without the rattles, but you can feel that vibration as you rip them. So it's a hybrid of the two basically. And where I'm at, central Minnesota, we got clear water, pressured fish, finicky fish, but I don't know a place in the world where you fish walleyes where they're not finicky. This thing shines because it's the best of both worlds. You can call fish in, they can still see it, it's that visual thing, but that slower fall as the season goes on, oxygen levels are lower and fish have seen everything. There's something about that shimmy, that glide that they just love. It's the best of both worlds. I really like a number five size where I'm at on pressured fish. You can bump up to that six if you're up north or on a walleye factory or in Manitoba. But I, the six is kind of an open water bait to me. Five is that best all around size. As the season goes on, make sure you try one of these bad boys on. They kill it. Natural colors, you can get them in UVs, but there's something special about that perch. So those are three killer hard bait options to catch more fish this ice fishing season. Hard baits just do a really good job of calling fish in from a distance, getting those aggressive biters, and usually they're bigger than average fish, but don't be afraid. Have that dead stick down next to you off to your side and you call those fish in from a distance. If they don't seal the deal and you can't finish them, they'll slide off, see that live bait option, you'll still catch them. So, quick little recap. I start off with a jig and wrap, that aggressive darty action. I transition into a rip and wrap. And slab wraps are kind of that sleeper option, the hybrid of the two, the catch fish midwinter when the bite gets tough.